It was the first round of the World Blitz Championship in 2022, and a showdown was expected between the 2016 Loveland Chess Festival and 2018 Belaton GM tournament winner Vladislav Kavalev and the chess goat Magnus Carlsen. However, the world champion was nowhere to be seen. At the start of the game, Kavalev showed his sportsmanship and respect for the reigning champion by informing the referee not to start the clock. Nevertheless, according to the rules, the three-minute blitz game with a two-second increment began, and Kavalev kicked off by pushing his pawn to e4. As time passed, there was still no sign of the world champion creating an intriguing drama with only 49 seconds remaining on the clock. Carlson was seen in the distance after rushing down the stage and apologizing to Kovalev Magnus shook hands with him. Now he had only 30 seconds left on a three-minute game, but Magnus Carlson's not one to be taken lightly in any given circumstance hold tight and get ready for the win. Magnus played E6 opting for the French defense, and Kovalev responded by taking the center with pawn to D4. Magnus attempted to open up the center with D5, and White captured the pawn following the exchange. French Kovalev usually doesn't go with this tactic, but perhaps he was trying his luck against Carlson White, then developed his knight, and Black developed his bishop after pawn c4 and knight f6. It appeared as though Kovalev was giving Magnus some time to relax. It seemed like White was thinking for a while, but deep down we all know he was just letting Magnus catch up. The silence broke with knight c3, and Black instantly castled. Kovalev captured a central pawn, and Magnus replied with a check which was blocked by a bishop. Then knight d7 was played. Look at Carlson just adjusting pieces despite having a time disadvantage. Magnus often does that to humiliate his opponents. A true classic white castled and black pushed his h-pawn to prevent white's bishop from attacking. After some basic moves, Magnus captured the pawn on e5 white attempted to attack black central knight and Magnus solidified the knight with a simple pawn push. Both queens then faced each other on the b-file, and the time was even for both of them now. After that, some quick trades occurred as neither player was happy to exchange their knights and queens. This was good, because it simplified the positions on the board with only three seconds left. On the clock, Kovalev played. Bishop d2. Magnus pushed a pawn. Moving the knight away, Magnus grabs the rook on e1 now. If white recaptured with the rook, his pawn would hang. So he took with the bishop opting for the wise approach. There was very little time left, and they had to play quickly. Magnus went after the d4 pawn, and Kovalev defended. Then Magnus threatened to take the knight on d3 with only one second left. White played knight e1 after some brilliant chess. Kovalev blundered with the move rook g1 as now Magnus could play bishop takes e3, but he completely missed that opportunity, and both players just traded fairly. It's ironic how these people function under such intense time pressure. Magnus tried to expand slowly on the king's side, and Kovalev tried his best to stop that, resulting in a pawn exchange you could see in Carlson's eyes that he wasn't happy about that. Both players continued to engage in a simple yet precise game of chess. Magnus, adopted an attacking approach, aiming to infiltrate via a file with his rook, which would be supported by his light square bishop. This led to a dance between the two rooks, as both sides sought to avoid a trade as Magnus closed in on the queen side. His opponent, Kovalev, brought his king into play to prevent any potential threats. Magnus responded by positioning his rook on the a8 square to attack from the flank. A critical moment in the game occurred when Magnus placed his rook on the e-file, forcing white to play knight f5. However, Kovalev ignored this and made a fatal mistake by capturing Magnus's bishop. This blunder proved to be disastrous for Kovalev, as the two black pawns on the b and c files became incredibly strong against the lone white king despite some back and forth. Magnus was able to maintain his advantage, and his two extra pawns proved decisive, as both could be promoted in the end. The position was untenable for Kovalev, who was forced to resign Magnus once again, demonstrated his superior skills and dominance over the board. As for why Magnus was late, it's hard to say without any additional information. He cited traffic as the cause, but there could have been other unforeseen circumstances. Regardless, he remained focused and showed his true talent when it mattered most.